Today we're gonna to talk about the Metasploit payloads. At the end of this video, you're gonna have a better understanding of what they are and how to select the correct payload during an attack against an exploitable vulnerability. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I wanna jump right into a demonstration on Metasploit payloads. So let's just move over to my Kali image with my hacking lab. I'm targeting the Chioptrix level three image, which I know has an exploitable vulnerability that I discovered during the reconnaissance phase. So let's start up the Metasploit framework. We will search for the exploit by typing search Lotus CMS. Now that we know there's an exploit available, let's type in the use exploit multi HTTP LCMS PHP exec. Notice that Metasploit is telling us that there's no payload configured and it's actually choosing one specifically for us. It's the PHP Meterpreter reverse TCP. So from reconnaissance, I know that my target is on the 10.0.2.6 IP address. So let's set the R host to 10.0.2.6 so it knows which system to actually attack. We also need to change the URI to root as well. We know this because then again, this is information we gathered during the reconnaissance phase. If you want to watch me gather that information, make sure that you watch the video listed above. Now that we have the pertinent information, let's just type run. You can see that the exploit completed, which means that the vulnerability is actually exploitable. However, it's also telling us that no session was created. This is because the payload failed to execute properly on the target system. Let's change the payload. Instead of the default payload, let's use the following. So I'll set payload to PHP, reverse underscore PHP. So let's run the exploit again and see what happens. We can see that a command shell session was open. So let's actually verify we're on the remote target though. So we'll just type uname A and we can see that it's a Chioptrix 3 server. So our attack was successful. So why did the first payload not work and why did the second one work? So actually, what's the difference? So the topic of payloads is actually extremely broad, especially when we start talking about obfuscation and virus scanning avoidance. But we can save that discussion for a later time so we don't really need to get too far into the weeds. Also, most professional penetration testers simply use the Metasploit payloads. So I think that it's best if we just start our conversation by sticking to just Metasploit payloads. Now, one crucial point. So it's imperative to use Metasploit responsibly and ethically. Misuse can actually have significant consequences. So always ensure you have the right permissions and adhere to any legal and ethical guidelines. In our case, we're using a hacking lab. So all attacks are restricted to isolated systems and networks that I own. If you wanna set up your own lab and follow along, make sure you watch my series on setting up a hacking lab. I also wanna mention that we're not gonna to get too deep into architecture and nomenclature of a payload. I want you to simply get familiar with what's presented to us in Metasploit and then give you the tools that you need to select the appropriate payload. So let's go back to our exploit. If we type in the command show payloads, we get a list of payloads that work specifically for this exploit. You can see that there are three types. We have generic, multi, and PHP. For our exploit, we chose the PHP exploit. So why? Well, the application we were targeting had a PHP implementation. So we know that it uses PHP and therefore using a payload designed around PHP would increase our chances of success. So why did we choose reverse PHP? Let's talk about the options first within the PHP payloads. We can break payloads down into two categories. One, we're trying to connect to a shell on the victim or two, the victim is trying to connect the shell back to our system. The first one where we try to connect with the victim is called a bind shell. The second one where the victim tries to connect back to us is the reverse shell. So each has their value. The biggest difference is that the bind shell on the victim opens up a port which might be detectable by firewalls and intrusion prevention applications that are on the system. So they could actually prevent the connection from being created. However, the bind shell payload is actually much smaller, which can make a huge difference depending on the vulnerability. 
The reverse shell is harder to detect because it opens what the system thinks is a temporary network port to connect back to a listener on our system. This temporary open port looks exactly like normal outbound traffic. The downside is that a reverse shell requires a larger payload. So let's try an experiment. Let's change the payload to PHP reverse underscore Perl and run it and see what happens. So it looked like that one works as well, which means there's a Perl language is installed on the system and we got it to execute our reverse connection. But since we were just talking about reverse versus bind shells, let's shift gears a little bit and see if we can connect via bind. So let's start with the PHP bind underscore PHP. Then we run it and it failed. So we know that something actually prevented the PHP bind payload for, from creating an open port that we can connect to. But since Perl worked on a reverse shell, so let, let's try that as a bind payload. So let's use payload PHP bind underscore Perl and run the exploit. So it looks like we have a shell. So now we know that Perl exploits work better against this target, which is good to know. So let's talk a little bit more. So now we know the difference between a bind shell and a reverse shell. So what is a meterpreter shell? So let's talk about stages of an exploit with the intent to gain a foothold on the target. So step one is we send an exploit against the vulnerable application. Step two is we create some sort of connection between us and the target. So that's either gonna be a bind shell or a reverse shell. Step three is often loading up hacking software on the remote system into memory. The best known of this type of in-memory software is Meterpreter, which comes installed by default on Metasploit. Created as a way of a remote command and control, Meterpreter provides a more robust way of interacting within the remote system. It downloads tools from our system into memory as needed, and then allows us to capture sensitive files and pivot easily on the victim system. Let's go back to the payloads. So we used the PHP payload because we knew that PHP was being used on the target. We also found out that Perl is on this system as well. During our reconnaissance, we also found out that this is a Linux system. But what if we didn't know any of this information? That's where generic payloads come in. So let's take another look at available payloads. Uh, we see that there is multiple generic payloads. So let's try another one. Let's set the payload to generic shell bind TCP and run the exploit again. So you can see that we successfully connected yet again. If we try the shell reverse TCP for generic, we'll also find that that works too. So what's actually happening since we chose generic? So when we're running generic, we're letting the payload decide what to use. So it gathers the architecture information and then sends the correct payloads to fit the target. In short, choosing generic we just let the system decide what and how to push a payload to the victim's system. The last type of payload I wanna talk about is the multi-payload. In the context of a payload, the multi means multi-handler. As part of an advanced topic, we can create standalone exploits and payloads outside of the Metasploit framework using a tool called MSF Venom. When we do that, we can decide to send different multi-staged complex payloads to the target Meterpreter being one of them. But when we're just using the Metasploit framework, multi is simply just another stager that is often used solely to push Meterpreter onto the target system. So there's a lot more academic deep dive conversations we could have about payloads, loaders, and stagers, but I just wanted to make sure that you understood how payloads worked in Metasploit and then give you the tools necessary to pick which payload makes the most sense. Hopefully this has been helpful, and I will say that if all else fails, simply just let Metasploit pick for you by using the generic payload options. If you have any questions, please make sure you join our Discord server, where we talk about our video tutorials and all things related to professional penetration testing. Thanks for watching, and happy hacking.